Дамы и господа, друзья, я в своем выступлении продолжу. I have decided that I will be talking about elections in Moscow, how we see this from different districts. I come from the Dorogomilova district, one of the central districts of Moscow. Uh, somebody said that elections to municipal authorities may be successful under certain conditions. I was elected in 2012, and in the same year there were the presidential elections in Russia, and uh, well, executive bodies were concentrating on presidential elections, and uh, you may know that Mr. Yevlinsky was participating in those elections, and uh, well, uh, the government actually broke the federal law when they did not allow Yevlinsky to participate in those elections. And uh, part of the municipal MPs from Yablaka and some other liberal parties were elected in the long run to the municipality. This was a shock to the executive authorities because all the municipal elections before that had been under the control and supervision of uh, the leading party and uh, well either people from the leading party or the spoiler parties were participating in those elections had been participating in those elections or uh, well candidates were people who had been under full control of the united russia party and after 2012 in the political party of moscow we find some districts that were headed by independent uh, members of the municipalities that started changing the face of those districts. And, uh, well, we saw hysteria among the executive bodies. Well, for example, in my municipal district, it happened so that six uh, people were representing the United Russia and uh, the remaining six came from other parties. And for a whole year, we would be blocking the election to this position of a member of the United Russia. And not only our, our district was not alone in doing this, and uh, Moscovites, people living in Moscow, had a choice, which was very important for us because, uh, uh, well, problems may arise at the district level, and we see that this district level is the closest level to the people in the street, so to say, and, uh, well, People would go to a municipal, to the municipal assembly, for example, or to the municipality, and uh, the reforms that had been happening under Mayor Lushkov have led to the system where the local self-government system was not working. So they had to go to the Uprava, to the local municipality, to try to resolve these issues. And uh, well, they would say that we are resolving your problem, so please elect us at the next elections and so on. This was done directly, indirectly, at any level. And uh, well, socially unprotected people, veterans of different wars, pensioners and so on, they would vote for the ruling party because of that, because there was propaganda. And uh, whatever the executive were, were doing, they were doing this to make people vote for the United Russia Party. And after this first shock of 2012, uh, the executive authorities had to get mobilized. And we saw this in the elections to the Moscow City Duma that happened in 2012. So, in addition to uh, administrative resources, uh, domination in the area of mass media of Moscow, in addition to that, the authorities of Moscow uh, realized that that was not enough. So, in direct violation of the civil code, they uh, started placing stands on the walls of the houses of Moscow that were uh, uh, advertising the candidates from the United Russia. And remember that we had primaries there. It was like a hidden, concealed advertisement campaign that took place to 
answer in advance of the start of the election campaign of other candidates. Through those primaries or so-called primaries, they advertised the candidates from uh, the United Russia. Other candidates participated, but now, after a lapse of time, we can draw very clear conclusions that all other participants in those primaries were simply used uh, by uh, the Unified Russia as a face window shop and to simply form a background for the candidates. And then another important uh, measure taken by Unified Russia is working with the uh, social protection agencies, other organizations, and personally with those people. That is, the people who uh, were dependent on the local administration. Cannot say that that was the decisive factor and the only factor allowing unified Russia to win or dominate is probably the better word. Well, lo uh, low turnover of electors in Russia, in Moscow on average, it was 10, 20 percent. You know, unified Russia, uh, it was about 11 to 12 percent people voting. That is every deputy, current deputy of uh, Moscow uh, State Duma. It was uh, a little more than 10 percent of the people who are eligible to vote voted for such people. That's the kind of representation we have in Moscow, in Moscow State uh, City Duma. This uh, means, and what, what kind of uh, uh, things those uh, uh, MPs do right now? They currently don't have a permanent job with the Moscow Duma. They come only for the time of the session of the Duma, except uh, uh, the chairpersons of the commissions of the Duma. And they're essentially the people who simply rubber stamp those um, draft laws that are being prepared by the executive uh, um, part of the Moscow Duma and the government of Moscow that the decisions of those MPs of uh, uh, Moscow Duma, that uh, this runs counter to Moscow laws and federal laws. Well, one example of recently is a decision to uh, install the monument to Vladimir, um, uh, the prince uh, in Vorobyovy Gori, place, uh, historically protected area, and they, uh, that was done in violation of the laws that uh, uh, came up against very negative response from uh, Moscow citizens, um, n never expected by the authorities or the military historical society that initiated that action. As a result, that uh, decision was repealed and there will not be a monument there in Malobyove Gore. But still there are places there that are under threat, especially protected territory. It is a landscape monument, something um, forming the image of Moscow. But still they plan uh, to uh, build an industrial area to do some other construction activity in that particular area. So the threat is still there. Well, and now getting back to the results of the election in Moscow, the fact that more, a little more than 20 percent of uh, voters participated in those elections, that shows that over those years of municipal elections and the governance of the ruling party, it did change its name over the years. But in the mentality of uh, Moscow citizens now, they have uh, superimposed the idea that it's no point in trying to vote in voting, that you don't have to go to uh, the ballots, that everything has been uh, decided, pre-decided, and uh, participated in those election campaigns. I can be certain and say it with certainty that the majority of Moscow residents uh, still think it like this, that nothing can be changed. And 
this is kind of the potential we have. And there's a positive vector. It is changing the mentality of Moscow. Uh, residency is changing. Uh, uh, they, um, the tendency is to participate more in election. That's the only way to change the political system and the political authorities that we have in Moscow and the Russian Federation. And the policy implemented by the executive authorities of Moscow contribute to the trend over the past several years. I give you one example. Those uh, rallies against uh, illegal construction, construction in the center of Moscow, uh, there were many activists participating without any party allegiance. We, Yabloka, did participate as well, but other people who would participate say, we are not uh, in, in any party, we are outside the party lists, but they participated and were quite active. And their opinion is this, that yes, whatever's being uh, resolved at the level of the government of Moscow is the consequence of political decisions of the past. You cannot say, I'm outside of a party, I'm outside of politics. No, what is being done is the result of very specific political decisions. And it's nice to hear for people with no party allegiance. It just shows that the mentality of Moscow residents is changing. And for our party, this means that it's a great potential of a future electorate and potentially our future victories. But we have to also be aware that the executive authorities have uh, learned the lessons from past elections and the election to the Moscow State uh, City Duma is now showing that they understand the importance of municipal elections because municipal authorities are closest to the voters. They now understand that in conditions with a sharp increase in the cost of living in Moscow and deteriorating environmental situation in Moscow. While in investment projects being implemented in Moscow directly affecting the lives of the people, road construction, office construction, other programs and other reforms, reform of health care. Well, the mayor of Moscow say everything is fine in healthcare. Now the residents of Moscow who visit uh, clinics every day, they know that the situation is deteriorating there with every day. So all of those actions mobilize and open the eyes you know, of the residents of Moscow. They start thinking, why are we living like this in this wonderful city? We're not this city is not for us, so the people keep telling us that we are masters of the city. Now we're simply a labor force. We're simply a lemon squeezed by the authorities and thrown away after there's no juice in ourselves. Uh, and this is, this is positive that the mentality is changing, which uh, helps uh, the residents better understand what kind of society they're in and that a lot depends on them and the society. And well, uh, my final point is this. We're talking about social liberal concept of development. So the social liberal concept of development, the elections in which I participated, is well, this concept is uh, the basis for consolidating the uh, residents of Moscow to create normal living conditions, to implement the principle where law reigns supreme, where, but on the other hand, it is that platform which is being attacked on a massive scale, both from the executive authority of the ruling party and the spoiler parties. Uh, Mr. Yevlinsky has said there has no analysis been made of that privatization program, so-called the liberal privatization that took place in the 1990s. 
and we should still hear the echoes of that in every election campaign where, where the residents would tell us the liberal the liberals what did they do to the country and they don't realize and don't know maybe they simply don't know that those people who did that reform uh, uh, the so-called liberal reform they are so far uh, uh, removed from uh, liberals that while well, you cannot confuse these two things okay, and getting back to the start of my presentation uh, let me tell a few words about the coming election of 2016 the executive authority clearly aware that municipal elections and municipal MPs who have shown their importance uh, for, to the residents of Moscow are the basis of other elections, including presidential elections. So there's elections that will take place next year in Moscow. And, well, and other cities would be looking uh, closely at what happens in Moscow. That's going to be a very uh, difficult campaign. Uh, a huge resources would be spent there to make sure to make sure uh, candidates from democratic opposition, especially Yablok, are not elected. And here we need the support of other democratic forces to be able to have an objective uh, coverage of the situation in Moscow and con uh, convey objective information to the residents. Our information resources are very limited, and this this is a very important element in election campaigns. Thank you.